Hello, Wonder Hussy here, out in the middle of nowhere again, on a very lonely road, in a very lonely part of the desert, sort of on the California, Nevada state line. Nothing much out here but sagebrush and creosote. And then, inexplicably, this giant casino. That's right, there's this pretty decent sized hotel and casino way out here in the middle of nowhere at the side of this extremely, extremely lonely, desolate desert highway, which doesn't even really go anywhere, by the way. I mean, if you go this way for about 16 miles, it'll take you to US 95 and the alien cat house brothel and gas station. And if you go this way for about eight miles, It'll take you to Death Valley Junction and the Amargosa Opera House, neither of which are massive population centers that would justify somebody building a hotel and casino of this size. So you might be wondering, who would be crazy enough to build a hotel and casino like this way out in the middle of nowhere? Well, I'll tell you who would build a place like this. It's a guy named Jim Marsh. I guess he's a car dealer based out of Las Vegas. Las Vegas is only like an hour, hour and a half from here. And I think he has like two or three car dealerships in Vegas. And I think he's done pretty well for himself over the years uh, because well, he's kind of known for collecting quirky and historical artifacts. Like I think he owns at least one saloon up in the uh, old historic mining town of Goldfield. And then I think he owns some properties up in Tonopah as well. And of course, the elephant in the room, <laughs> the cow in the shot, as it were. <laughs> he also bought this giant fiberglass cow, which I think this thing used to be on top of the Holy Cow Brewery in Las Vegas. If you ever went to Vegas back in the, uh, well, any time before like maybe 2005, you might remember there was a brewery called Holy Cow right on the corner of Sahara and Las Vegas Boulevard. And this, well, this cow here <laughs> was sitting on top of it. Look familiar? If you don't recognize it from the brewery, you might recognize it from, I actually made a video here once about mm, three years ago, uh, just all about how weird this little, well, I even hesitate to call it a border town because it's really more of a, well, it's a settlement and there's businesses sort of scattered all over the desert out here. I mean, there's a bar across the street there, a really interesting looking bar. And then there's a post office way down there and a VFW. All of that I covered in my original video, which I'll put a link to up here. You can check that out if you're interested and you sh totally should be because it's fascinating. Anyway, I made a video all about this weird and wonderful area they call Amargosa Valley. That's right, Amargosa, just like the Amargosa Opera House or the Amargosa River. It's a Spanish word meaning bitter. And it was, uh, the river was named Amargosa by the original Spanish settlers that were on the old Spanish trail, you know, uh, walking all the way from Santa Fe to Los Angeles. Well, when they got to this part of the trail and they were looking for water sources, they came upon this river that when they tasted the water, bah, they named it Amargosa because it was so bitter. Anyway, this whole area is called Amargosa Valley. There's a lot of weird and wonderful stuff out here. I covered most of it in my last video, but I really didn't uh, give too much attention to this bizarre hotel casino. So I thought I would come back and take a closer look. Okay, so this place is called the Long Street Inn and Casino. And there's a bunch of kind of cool old, well, mining and historical artifacts out front. I guess part of Jim Marsh's vast collection of stuff, like this really cool old buggy, cool bronze lions, this old clothes ringer, decommissioned crosswalk sign, some kind of old sled, gas tank on wheels, and a whole bunch of busted, rusted old mining equipment. Like, look at this thing. I don't even know what this was, but it's ginormous and it was made by the Fairbanks Morse Company. I mean, look at the size of this flywheel. I guess it was probably sat on top of the head frame of a mine to like hoist up the ore bins from below or something like that. And it's actually a pretty nice hotel and casino on the inside too. I mean, I've never actually stayed in the hotel, so I can't speak to the quality of the rooms, but I've been to the casino and I've eaten in the cafe 
a few times, and it's pretty good food, you know, burgers and chicken fried steaks, stuff like that. But the ambiance in the casino is unparalleled weirdness. It feels like you're in a David Lynch movie or Quentin Tarantino movie because you're out in the middle of nowhere desert, and then all of a sudden you come into this, well, what looks like a gay 90s, like 1890s ice cream parlor with, you know, over-the-top gilded Victorian stripy wallpaper and weird antiques all over the place, gambling antiques and bric-a-brac and weird mannequins. So, hey, there's more than a few weird mannequins. And then there's even a, a meteor. Some guy found this giant meteor in the desert, not too far from here, actually, not that long ago. And I guess Jim Marsh <laughs> bought that too and added it to his fabulous collection. Anyway, this casino is off the chain. I was actually here on a Friday night recently and they had a, a guy playing live music and the, well, there was a few people even kind of dancing and well, I guess I should say there was a few people who actually looked up from their slot machines long enough to maybe think about dancing. Anyway, I think it's awesome. I definitely need to spend more time here and I plan to do so in the future. But anyway, uh, I guess Jim Marsh built this place because he was anticipating that they were gonna build that nuclear waste repository in Yucca Mountain. Okay, have you ever heard of the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository? It's a, well, it's a big mountain uh, over that way uh, towards Beatty. Big mountain, supposedly the optimal type of bedrock conditions to store super high level, I think, radioactive nuclear waste. Well, that project stalled and I don't know if it'll ever get picked up again. And unfortunately, well, I think that's, well, that's what I heard why Jim Marsh built this casino way out here in the middle of nowhere because he was expecting there to be this <laughs> Yucca Mountain nuclear waste thing and a bunch of people work in there and well by gum those working men were gonna need a place to go well gamble drink and party and also stay uh, in addition to the hotel rooms there's also an RV park out back well this was built it says in 1995 and here it is 2022 and yucca mountain still seems to be dead in the water so well unfortunately for poor jim marsh i don't think his gamble really paid off here but it did in a different way see out in the parking lot in front of the hotel <laughs> there's these gas pumps just two lonely gas pumps well i guess four because there's two sided and this just happens to be the only gas station for many, many miles. Like I said earlier, if you go another 16 miles that way, you get to the Alien Brothel gas station. But if you're not going that way, like say you're going into Death Valley or you're coming from Death Valley or... Well, there's no reasonably priced gas for, oh uh, gosh, probably like 157 miles that way. So this gas station here apparently makes Jim Marsh more money than the entire hotel and casino. And I believe it because, well, I don't live that far from here myself and I don't live anywhere near any affordable gas stations. You know how these gas stations out in the middle of the desert do. I mean, they know they have you by the short and curly so they can charge whatever they want. Well, I actually don't think this place gouges you quite that bad. I mean, well, it depends on where you're from, but well, if you're buying diesel, you're looking at 388 and unleaded, you're looking at 382 all the way up to 424. Now I always get the cheap stuff and I just paid, I paid 357 in Vegas the other day. So 382, you know, and then in Pahrump, I just gassed up in Pahrump today and it was like 309. So yeah, 382 isn't like the cheapest in the world, but compared to Shoshone or anything you're gonna find in Death Valley, this is a real bargain. And apparently it's a real source of revenue for old Jim Marsh. But yeah, uh, it wasn't just built to be a gas station. It was meant to be well, it was meant to be a happening hot spot. And well, unfortunately, because Yucca Mountain never happened, now it's just this big fancy hotel out in the middle of nowhere that hardly anyone has ever heard of and hardly anyone stays at, even though it's like, it's really not that far outside Death Valley. Death Valley is probably another 40 miles or so, 30 miles even that way. So if you don't want to shell out the big bucks to stay at that fancy hotel in Furnace Creek, this is actually not a bad option. I mean, in addition to the casino, there's also this bizarrely, lushly landscaped area out back with a big, well, this looks like a big duck pond and uh, some decorative, <laughs> decorative desert displays. <laughs> Look at these guys having a shootout. Look at this cool gazebo. It's like a little smoking gazebo, a little ashtray on this table in the middle. 
Man, this would be the perfect place to come sit at night. If you were staying here in one of these rooms, you could come out here and, uh, well, you know, smoke a doob. I mean, we are in Nevada. Marijuana is legal. Anyway, it's all just very lush and green for the middle of the barren desert, which you can see here behind the RV park. Look at those mountains. I mean, we are right outside Death Valley, USA. But if you wanted to stay here, this is what you're... Well, if you're staying in an RV, this is what your campsite would look like. Or you could just be bougie and get a room at the hotel. Or you could be super bougie and have a destination wedding here. That's right, there's even a chapel at the Long Street. Let's see if we can go inside. Oh yeah, look. <gasps> wow, oh my goodness. I've said this many times before in my videos, I'm not the marrying kind. So walking down the aisle in this little chapel is the closest I'm ever gonna get. <laughs> oh gosh, look. <laughs> These kind of deflated mylar balloons that say, Mr. and Mrs. I don't know, man, your balloons shouldn't be that deflated on the day of your marriage or you're doing something wrong. I mean, I can see after being married for 30 years, then yeah, your balloon's gonna need a little air, if you know what I mean. But on your wedding day, gosh, they should be tight and plump and shiny and oh gosh, just ready to go. Look, here's the Bible. If you were the preacher officiating at this wedding, this is where you'd be standing. And then here's where you'd be spitting your chaw. Here's where you'd be drying all the bridesmaids tears. Wow, look how many Bibles. I wonder why there's so many. I'd guess in addition to being an avid collector of historical bric-a-brac, Jim Marsh is also a devout Christian. Oh gosh, look, there's even a guest book. I guess you can sign your name if you get married here. Or, I don't know. Maybe it's just anybody who stops by. Let me see. Thanks for the good stay, Bo and Natalia from Denmark. Oh, wow, look, from Italy and Sicily with love. From Switzerland. Oh, wow, people stay here from all over the world. This is cool. Far out, to the as far as places to get married go, this actually probably wouldn't be too bad. I mean... You're out here in this beautiful desert, very peaceful, middle of nowhere, no distractions in the form of strip clubs for the bachelor party. Although now that I think about it, well, that alien brothel is only 16 miles down the road. So scratch that, maybe this wouldn't be such a good place to get married or at least not to have your bachelor party. Oh wow, and then look over here next to the chapel, there's this huge old piece of, looks like farming equipment to me. Isn't that like a thresher or something? But like a really old steampunk era thresher? It's probably not even a thresher and everybody watching this who's a farmer is laughing at me, but I don't know, isn't that some kind of farm equipment? And then it's, well, I was gonna say it's pulling, but I guess it's just parked in front of this really old wagon. Look at that, that's from the pioneer days. More stuff from the collection of Jim Marsh. Oh wow, and then look, here's the pool. Well, that's a pretty nice pool. Looks like there's a jacuzzi and plenty of chaise lounges to lay out and well, sunbathe under that bright desert sun. Uh, okay, today's overcast and cloudy and kind of weird. And well, it's January, it's chilly. So no one's at the pool now. And in fact, it's locked up tighter than you know what. But there's still plenty of other options for entertainment here at Jim Marsh's fabulous Long Street Hotel and Casino in beautiful Amargosa Valley. <laughs> and that brings me to the final interesting thing about the Long Street Hotel. You've probably been hearing all this bleeding and hee-hawing in the background. Well, that's because there's also a petting zoo. That's right. It's the Jim Marsh Petting Zoo. And it looks like he's got a whole bunch of different animals. Looks like we got some kind of sheep. And while we're looking at the rear end of a, I think a musk ox or a water buffalo. Maybe that's the same thing. Here's a donkey. Hi, Baylor. Oh, what a cutie. Oh, he wants treats. Should I give him some treats? It just so happens that, well, somebody tipped me off that if I come here, I should bring carrots. That the animals like carrots. You like carrots? Got some right here. Oh yeah, look, he's excited. Oh yay, yum yum. Oh, you want another one? Well, hold on, I think this sheep might want a carrot too. Hold on, let me see if the sheep wants one. You want a carrot? You want a carrot, little lady? Oh, calm down, he's gonna try to snap it away from you. Here. No, you don't like carrots? Well, sheep's too good for the carrot, but the donkey will take it. Here, you want it? Oh, what about this guy though? This one wants some. Here, quick before that bossy hog gets it. 
oh, but look, there's a little goat over here. And he's like craning his neck, hopefully like, what about me? Don't forget the goats. Okay, I'm on my way, boys. <laughs> look how excited. Aw. Oh no, don't run out. <laughs> Do you want it or no? No, you don't like carrots? You want the carrot? <laughs> I guess goats don't like carrots. All right, you can have it. Thank you for not biting me. I appreciate it. Well, I tried to give you one. You didn't want it. You don't like this. <laughs> Yay. Hey, I got one more. I'll give it to you. What about the musk ox? Hold on. Okay, here comes the musk ox. Maybe I can give this last carrot to the musk ox. Do you like carrots? Oh my gosh, look how beautiful this thing is. Whoa, yikes though. I bet the teeth on that thing are ginormous. Okay, here. Don't bite me. There you go. Yay. Oh my gosh, this musk ox is beautiful. I love you. Can I pet you? Oh, wow, look at these horns. Oh my gosh. You're a beauty. Oh, I don't have any more carrots for you. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, this is just one more thing you can do way out here in the middle of nowhere at the Long Street. Now, you might be wondering why they named this place the Long Street. And yeah, it's true, it is situated right by the side of this long, lonely desert highway, which is basically a long street, but that's not where the name came from. The Long Street is actually named after a real-life historical figure named Jack Longstreet. And he had a very complicated history, way too complicated for me to jam into this video. He needs a video all to himself. And so that's just what I'm gonna do, make a video about Jack Longstreet. So stay tuned for that coming soon. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this weird little tour of this weird little casino in the middle of this weird little valley in the middle of nowhere. But if you're coming to Death Valley, well, you might consider staying here and checking it out for yourself. <laughs>